My uh, name is Danilo Tsvok. I am uh, representing the uh, Ukrainian Institute of the Intellectual um, Ownership, and I'm going to be the creator of this model, which is dedicated to intellectual property and uh, creative industry. First of all, I would like to uh, thank uh, the Ministry of Culture, Information and Policy uh, that they are paying attention to the intellectual property and uh, of, uh, this, uh, this uh, format um, meet matches uh, cooperative 100% and today we're going to have a discussion which is uh, and it has uh, the the direction of which uh, is uh, which is dedicated to equipment because so uh, we know uh, that we had a big challenge which uh, Uh, why we had the new tools, the new approaches, and we are going to discuss them today. And the intellectual property is... Um, we can find it in all creative industries, and that is why it is a very important question, and I'm going... Uh, I want to, to suggest uh, not to take the introduction long and uh, it's better to have the panel discussion and to discuss uh, the issues which we have at the moment and that is why we're uh, coming to our first uh, speaker in the general format uh, first uh, the speaker is uh, uh, is uh, talking and then we have the uh, discussion and after that we uh, we can discuss with the audience when we are talking about the creative product about the creative economy in general this year we have uh, a very cool uh, tool which uh, is uh, which we can see in many industries and uh, it is also reflected uh, in the performing uh, industry in and now we can say in digital performing art uh, which is uh, which is uh, very common now and i think all of you have heard about uh, crypto bank uh, as uh, the artist people as and nft and uh, many consequences for intellectual property and challenges uh, which are discussed worldwide and we have and we have them and uh, the first speaker we would like to um to pass the floor to the uh, the phd in uh, judicial science uh, the co-founder of and uh, the director of uh, and uh, the leader of um, creative uh, studios, but uh, I can add uh, that the person, uh, as a person who is participating in uh, discussions in a creative discussion uh, for the intellectual property, uh, Ms. Olga, we are glad to see you. We know that uh, uh, the, you know you, you, you can tell us a lot about digital art and technologies. Uh, the floor is yours. Uh, it is very difficult to believe that a year ago everyone was asking what is digital art. And I remember the uh, in 2020. Um, and uh, now everyone is talking about NFT, about this uh, issue and uh, the phenomenon of uh, digital art, which uh, became more actual in a pandemic. I can see that uh, uh, there is only the first page of my presentation on the screen. So I said just to move to the next slide. And we have to say that pandemic made the digital art uh, more important. And uh, it made all the processes uh, faster, which are related to the development uh, of it. And uh, you can see my um, article uh, which I made in 2021 on the hype of uh, pandemic and uh, uh, Miss uh, Olena uh, Zelenov uh, was referring to this article of in Forbes uh, that is uh, the best artist in uh, digital art which is making the report for Deloitte and for the other editions 
And in these articles, I was referring to the first cases and I was trying to forecast what will happen next. And uh, in the future, we had uh, lots of big events and uh, it was difficult to uh, forecast how it 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 will influence um, how pandemic will influence uh, on art which is very conservative by the way and if the market for example the of movie making uh, the market of uh, the digital uh, TV, the market of uh, games, uh, the uh, the market of design, uh, they were developing uh, fast. The music uh, uh, became digital, uh, very uh, very organically, and the sphere of um, and uh, all and the art was uh, developing in classical. Uh, spheres and and only pandemi made the world to to become digital and the next slide please I I, I want to introduce a few cases and you can see how um, digital uh, how uh, digitalization was accepted by markets uh, who uh, who understood that they are not able to have the markets offline and online became the normal way uh, to help to this kind of uh, international big uh, markets as Art Basel. Uh, then Art Buy joined Art Basel and you can see Kuhn's uh, work uh, a bubble Venera, which was sold uh, online for eight million dollars. So that was uh, the most famous, uh, the most famous and the most expensive uh, case uh, in online. And this market became online. And there were virtual rooms, actually, that were the websites where you could see online the works uh, which were represented, uh, which were presented by artists and art galleries. Uh, that is uh, the next uh, dimension. When we held online market of digital art, that is a famous market of digital art, uh, Kadaf. It is specialized in digital art, and that is the art which was created with IT technologies, or uh, it was made digital. And they were trying to have a virtual online rooms where you could get uh, the experience and you could move. At, the, at this market, you could uh, see digital art. The next slide, please. Uh, yes, uh, um, actually, uh, we had lots of options during this time, uh, starting with uh, simple online marketplaces and uh, uh, the so-called uh, places where you can walk and uh, you can get the same experience as uh, if you are uh, in the offline gallery and you can see the pictures from uh, different uh, points uh, and you can uh, you can communicate with the artists uh, with the owners of the galleries and uh, you can have uh, sometimes online um, audio uh, guides and uh, some famous startup, uh, they uh, suggested interactive experience when you are facing facing uh, the art only in the virtual, only in virtual, and then 
Oh, we do not have that much time, so I'm going to be first, and then the famous case uh, when we had uh, the process uh, which is called uh, NFT hype uh, when we had uh, the expensive sales of the um, art uh, to 2019 uh, that were the artificial platforms, a very limited number uh, of uh, crypto anarchies because uh, uh, digital art is uh, co connected to the uh, crypto community, but in 2006, these processes, uh, the uh, uh, people faced it and uh, a lot of uh, collect uh, people who are collecting art uh, uh, so that, and uh, probably all of you have heard it, uh, the crypto pun is um, you can see it on the screen. It was sold on the uh, famous platform CryptoPunk, and of course, uh, it is uh, the object of um, uh, collectioning. And each uh, phase of uh, punk is unique. And we had this uh, phenomenon on FNFT and uh, the object which uh, are existing in one sample. They existed before that, but NFT appeared with the pandemic. Uh, we move forward. And uh, one more case, uh, which uh, Mr. Tsvok was mentioning, that is uh, the famous uh, Beeple uh, artist. It is a network uh, artist who was uh, making digital works. Uh, uh, Michael Winkelmann, uh, he, uh, the first, uh, his work cross uh, was a uh, was uh, sold and then uh, Christie's has uh, closed uh, the auction for um, for people with uh, the number 69 million uh, dollars and that was uh, the um, the very famous case and it meant that uh, the digital art is also a big part of the market and people are and investors are interested in it and uh, i think that after that the nft hype uh, appeared and i can say that uh, it disappears first and we thought that it was it would it would hold for one year but actually it was uh, two months and there was a powerful hype and then the market and the statistics uh, we saw that uh, the market go down, so, but uh, we cannot say that NFT will not exist, uh, but uh, probably they will be on a plateau and would, that would be stable and legalized and we move uh, forward. And uh, there is one more interesting case. When NFT phenomenon appeared and uh, famous works uh, became digital. There were lots of illegal sales, but the founder of uh, Tron, Justin Sun, he has demonstrated the example how to legalize NFT, and he has bought uh, uh, Andy Warhol and Picasso um, works, uh, and he has legalized them. And you can see the case where A Tron and Christie's, uh, United Christie's was uh, also hyping on that. Uh, it became a more, it was the most, um, the most modern auction, and uh, it was making the trends on the market. And we move uh, forward. I uh, I think I'm losing you. Uh, can you hear me? Can you hear me well? Yes. Wonderful. Uh, Olga, could you please uh, uh, go a little bit quicker? We are pressed for time. I understand. It's the slight number nine. Altogether, we have ten. So what is NFT phenomena? This is the analog of intellectual intellectual pro property, a unique intellectual property, the tokens that cannot be replaced by anything else, which in digital dimension 
may uh, realize the same uh, or represents the same as if you owned some work of art, exclusive work of art. So on the screen now you have presented NFT terms that associate with certain term used by the community, by the art community. I will not uh, go through this list in full. So the phenomenon on NFT allows to resolve the issues with operation, usage of digital uh, art, uh, problems with digital art, which existed before. And the last thing, types of tokens. In my opinion, this is an important piece of information because now we have uh, not just ERC-71, which is an NFT in itself. Uh, this is a token that allows to operate object, this unique object, single object. Mm, this exists for unique digital objects which were created as digital in, in nature, in essence. There is another token. It's uh, like semi-replaceable uh, re token. It allows to implement the system of, uh, of work, of a certain number of works. And it can implement, it can help in management of digital objects. Mm, a certain number of digital objects existed. Also, the new type of uh, token, uh, which allows, uh, which can be used under various types of licenses, the license to own and the license to create, which um, provides for recreation and change it. So since we don't have much time, uh, it was a challenge to present uh, this information. Uh, but still, I did my best. Thank you, Olga. Thank you for this excursion to the world of the digital art uh, this, and simultaneously the world of the digital assets. And I'm sure that these instruments will be uh, used in practice in the future. At the same time, these instruments also pose a lot of challenges, a lot of questions, and the global community uh, discusses, is actually discussing um, this, this phenomena. How do we behave with those NFT? What do we do with them? But this is extremely important, extremely necessary in order to form the dialogue, to create the dialogue between on a global level with regard to approaches to um, various instruments. In this context, I would like to proceed with the speech of our an, another guest, uh, which is a more of an overview and economic character. Talking about economy last year, regardless of pandemics, expert, expert of creative goods, creative projects from 9% grew to 17%. This is an outstanding result. And that was the first thing. The second thing, we really wanted to hear the opinion, your opinion with regard to the place of Ukraine in rating, Global Innovation Index rating, uh, where they consider indicators um, uh, related to creative Industries. It was as, as of recently was uh, published by the Association of, of Intellectual Property. The representative of the state that we have right now, our guest, uh, will cover the subject. So please, uh, Bogdan Paduchak, the deputy director of the Department for Development of Intellectual Property from the Ministry of uh, of Economic Econo Economy. The floor is yours. Thank you, thank you for the introduction. And also I would like to thank the previous speaker, Ms. Olga, for very interesting presentation. So on my behalf, I wanted to inform you about the recent uh, results and uh, our recent developments in the sphere of the state policy with regard to intellectual property uh, of uh, creative industries. Next slide, please. This slide, uh, I will not uh, 
spend a lot of time uh, covering it. I just wanted to remind you that Ukraine is the core signer of more than 20 international agreements. In particular, in, uh, it entails the cooperation with the uh, World Organization of Intellectual Property. It is the agency of the United Nations, and it is responsible for the policy uh, of the global policy with regard to the intellectual property. And of course, we are the members of the principal international agreements, in particular those related to IP. I wanted to mention uh, the cooperation of Ukraine, the Minister of Economy and uh, Ukrainian um, patient uh, uh, organization agency. Uh, I wanted to um, mention uh, about our interaction with uh, the IPO. We've signed a number of agreements uh, with regard to alternative resolution of uh, disputes, uh, the training center dedicated to uh, uh, international property. In the beginning of October, Ukraine will participate in the meeting, and hopefully we shall uh, sign the new updated program for cooperation with this agency. Next slide. In the context of today's subject, I, I wanted to mention that the Ministry of Economic economy, together with our national organ for intellectual property, uh, Ukrainian intellectual. Uh, we uh, work on creation of the Ukrainian training center. And uh, as part of it, we want to develop the uh, It will be as a preparation for the full scope launch and uh, professional training of the experts and development of the professional training programs. Next, several slides in the con. I wanted to mention that creation and development of creative industries. Please, next slide. We pay attention to educational uh, events uh, which we hold for our school children and uh, senior school children. In particular, we try to do our best that they, as the future creators, they knew as much as possible about intellectual property and the value of, of this phenomenon. And I wanted to thank our uh, national agency, Ukraine Patent, for their dedication to this, to this issue, and for participation in many trainings and educational events. IB for children, for instance, dreams come true. Uh, what is creativity? What is innovations? Also, uh, as of recently, the open lesson. Uh, about the basics of intellectual property on the basis of the national ecological and okay so i've mentioned uh, about these events and in uh, april and may 2021 the ministry of economy together with uh, the ipo uh, held a uh, educational campaign dedicated to International Day of Intellectual Property. Altogether, we hold 80 online and offline educational events, which covered more than 4,000 um, individuals from various regions of Ukraine, of them 200 and 2,600 school children and 1,400 students. Also, one of the events implemented by our agency is the creation of the platform Creative Academy. And I invite all of you to uh, get familiar with this familiar. There is a link to Creative Academy. Please, next slide. Here we have the 
slide about Creative Academy. So this is the resource for it covers basic issues related to protection of intellectual property rights in the in what in, with regard to creative industries where our young talents have the opportunity to receive the basic knowledge, main knowledge related to the subject. Plus, it provides for for a number of sources uh, that our school children and, and, and students may use. Also, we work on popularization of issues of intellectual property. We publish uh, scientific and po popular publications. And uh, you also had the opportunity to see the publications. Um, public, uh, issue number one, uh, Walt Disney and Mickey Mouse. Uh, issue number two, Steve Jobs. And issue number three, dedicated to Elon Musk. So through these publications, we wanted to inform our school children the value of intellectual property rights and um, to um, get them interested and involved in creative industries uh, to be able to realize, to somehow realize them, to uh, somehow use their skills in in this regard. Also, one uh, another publication is IP for Children Art Book. Um, so several issues of this uh, of this publication have er arrived. Um, so please uh, visit visit the site, spread the information, use it, um, show it to our school children. Next slide, please. So uh, together, so in addition to VIPO, our ministry works with the German Association GIZ. They, together, they implement the project application and implementation of the EU association uh, in the sphere of trade. Um, so in particular, um, this, uh, this agreement, um, association agreement, pays huge attention to intellectual property. In particular, we held for webinars with regard to activities of collective management organizations and five webinars uh, dedicated to uh, legal protection of geographic names. Next slide, please. So as of recently, or months, or months and a half, we've been working with GIZ, and we are finalizing manga on intellectual property. Hopefully, in the beginning of October, we shall finalize uh, the final version of this product. So I wanted to thank our colleagues from Patent from the National uh, Agency for Intellectual Property, who tried, who did their best to inform the children of 12 to 18, the teenagers, uh, using comics, so that using comics, using these publications, they uh, learned what is intellectual property right, what will happen if they are violated, and what can be received, uh, what can we gain from, from the proper implementation of, and uh, compliance with this norm. So uh, the ministry, together with Ukraine Patent, who acts as a national uh, agency for intellectual property, we really covered a lot of uh, areas and a lot of activities related to creative industries. And in the future, we shall continue to improve the level of the protection of intellectual property through implementation of these educational uh, events. And so in this last slide, you can see the links to the training and address to the um, address of the training center, 
to our training center. This is the very last slide. There was a, a question with regard to global index, and I wanted to say that this year Ukraine um, has become uh, one of the top 50, 50 countries of the world compared to the last year. Uh, we are four places down. Uh, just recently, we were on on the 45th uh, uh, place. This index includes or encompasses several indices, it's index input and index output. What is it about? Talking about input. Um, so we assess the elements of economy that provide for innov innovation activity in general. This is institutional capacity, infrastructure, situation in the market, um, business situation as to the output. We assess the results generated as part of innovation activity in every country. So we have two elements or two components, the knowledge of technology, level of the knowledge of technology, and uh, the level of creative outputs. And so regardless that our country lost uh, for positions, so to say, compared to the last year. At the same time, the indicators are rather stable. Uh, we are the top 50. We are still one of the top 50 countries. And cross-sectoral interaction, cooperation between all of the agencies provides for the proper operation and functioning uh, of the proper ecosystem in our state. Thank you very much for your speech and for uh, informing us what the state does in terms of international policy. I'm sure we shall come back to this discussion later on uh, during our panel discussion. Thank you very much. Thank you for the speech. So, Good timing. Uh, looking forward to see you and Ms. Olga during the panel discussion. And now to the speakers that we have not online but offline. It is a pleasure to have you here, especially given that uh, we spent too many, too much time online. Uh, anyway, uh, we wanted to discuss more practical issues, uh, saying that on this forum, there are many creators uh, present here, the creator of the products. And uh, as to the issues and questions that they face, uh, they, they started f start facing them only after they encounter some issues, some problems. Sometimes it's too late to resolve them uh, because uh, of a uh, lot of of, of, of effort, efforts that it takes. Why is it important to protect intellectual property? And what are the cases out there? I would like to give the floor to our next speaker, Maxim Popov, who is, who will tell us, who will cover the subject. Please, Maxim, the floor is yours. Maxim represents man mentors of him, and he is the leading expert and lawyer. We, as uh, the experts in the intellectual property, we do understand the, the the point about the intellectual property, and we do understand why we have to protect it, and that is our bread, and we are making money on that, but we face uh, the fact that our clients do not understand that. They know what is intellectual property, the patents, uh, the trademark. They can say, please uh, uh, give me the patent with uh, the... Uh, 
uh, with the certificate, uh, and uh, actually I can say that they are saying that it's, it takes a long time, and I can agree with them, and in some cases they say that it is expensive, but uh, uh, to to fix it, it is even more expensive, and the most popular third question, and we are going to, and we are trying to persuade them, uh, that is a question of why do I need that? And one of the cases why we need it is uh, the supreme case uh, that is um, a special print which is making limited uh, collaboration. They are very expensive. All around the world they have they had 11 stores and suddenly I can can try to imagine when they found out that I they have collaboration with Samsung, but they are not they. That is the other brand with the same logo, with the same name. How could it happen? As they were uh, very small, they were not trying to register everywhere, and a uh, few guys decided to have their own brand, and uh, maybe you have heard about it, uh, that is Supreme Italy, Supreme Spain, and they had uh, uh, registered trademarks in 54 con countries, including Ukraine, and they have and they promised to open around 74 uh, stores. And I want to remind you, the original brand had only 11, and they even opened the store in Kiev even, and it is closed now. And they actually made, uh, they almost made the collaboration with this kind of big brand as Samsung. And after that, people started to understand that it can be a fake brand. And as uh, in the end, uh, the the original brand didn't have any trademarks uh, in China and they cannot uh, have any collaborations, but they just uh, stopped collaboration. It was, uh, um, but uh, people understood that this kind of big brand is making collaboration with uh, the fake. And what we are doing at the moment, for one of the Ukrainian brands, we have registered two trademarks. Why did we do that? Because at the moment we have a new front. We are uh, the specialist in the intellectual property. We are not uh, uh, doing uh, some control uh, procurements, and all the counterfeit is uh, on 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 the internet. That is Instagram. That is Facebook. That is a big uh, uh, market. And if you want to block something there, it is. Um, impossible to do without the brand and even if you own this kind of brand for example instagram uh, it is uh, not very flexible and uh, you have to prove that you're original that you're cool and so on and so on and usually we usually we are able to do that and you can see how it works so, so there is an account with uh, thousand one thousand two thousand followers and uh, maximum was 40 or 50 thousand and uh, uh, you make a report and you are um, you have communication with Instagram and then you are blocking the account. How uh, can it also help? Well, for one of our brands, we have registered uh, uh, the trademark Pravi Berachlivi Berry. They are famous uh, for making these kind of uh, hoodies. Uh, they have uh, the the signs on the sleeve and one more. One more brand decided to do, to do the same, and uh, many people were confused. And some of uh, mass media would say that it's uh, uh, plagiarism, but actually there was uh, confusion. And when we had this trademark, uh, this trademark uh, agreed that to stop the production of these uh, hoodies, and we couldn't do that without a trademark collaboration. It is also very important because usually we can see that some brands uh, want to have some collaboration, but as a result, in the result, when we try to to have an agreement or a contract, it is impossible because brand has nothing. One brand has idea, the other brand has idea, and uh, they are coming to us and they are saying, uh, okay, do a contract uh, for us and how we can describe the idea, there is no way. And if you want to have a collaboration, you have to, to think uh, of the basis of um, of this collaboration contracts. Uh, contracts are also very important. Many of our brands, uh, they are represented also abroad. Uh, 
they are trying to to, to trade abroad. Uh, it, they are very interesting for the world. And if you want to become one of these kind of brands and uh, you want to be on a uh, far fetch, uh, then you will uh, see this kind of contract. First, uh, that you have to show that it's your brand. Uh, second, uh, that it's uh, the registered trademark. And if there would be any kind of issues, to the store, you are responsible for it. If you have no trademark, of course, uh, this brand is going to be responsible for that. And that is why it is uh, really necessary to have this uh, kind of thing. And also, we have another kind of um, connection. When we have uh, contracts with uh, photographers, uh, artists, or any other independent artists, we can see that uh, uh, the clients uh, when they see uh, that there are some uh, some some uh, rules, uh, they say, uh, what do you mean? You're not passing us all the rights. We are paying you money that are money. You are doing what we say. And uh, slowly but surely, we are managing that. Uh, we are having usually two options uh, that are the limited rights, uh, and uh, it costs uh, X. And if the client wants to have all the rights, it, it costs uh, even more. So they are able to choose. And the independent artists, uh, they are, they would be protected also according to this contract. And I can say that we have it not only in Ukraine, when our brands are abroad, one of the first countries where we are suggesting to register is China. In China, there is a rule. If uh, the first who, who registered the brand is the owner of the brand. If you are super popular uh, and you didn't manage to register it first, uh, it would be difficult to, uh, to get the registration. And the local the the uh, the citizens in China they uh, do not think that it's a problem. Uh, their logic is that if the original brand didn't do anything, uh, then um, then I'm not doing anything bad. And uh, oh, you, it is obligatory to do these kind of things because even New Balance and Burberry they are facing the same problem because uh, they are uh, they are trying to get back their trademarks in general that is it uh, i was trying to be fast and if you have any question thank you maxim that was really cool very cool cases and uh, uh, let's uh, not uh, make our karma bad and let's protect intellectual property and the main thing is how to use it uh, to continue uh, the issue about the cases, we were discussing collaboration, and uh, uh, we have heard that mono a product can be not compatible in the creative industries, and that is why you have to uh, collaborate, and uh, uh, that is cross-sectoral history when one industry is uh, are mixing with the others, and uh, then you have the interest uh, from the point of uh, you from of intellectual property. For example, one of Ukrainian brands, which was uh, pretty successful, uh, we are not going to promote it because it is not allowed. But nevertheless, uh, very cool art combined with uh, with with clothes and to our uh, famous clothes are sold, and that is a really cool case and. There is a question how not to crowd the line which can uh, which can violate the the intellectual property how you can protect yourself when you're in this kind of collaboration and uh, how to work uh, in collaboration and why it is needed and uh, how we can uh, protect them and uh, I would like to introduce Potocki Mukova, PhD in legal science, uh, the, pet, uh, the head of, of um, the Committee for Intellectual Property in, in, Internet, in Ukrainian Association of uh, the Lawyers. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Danila. Thank you very much uh, for the invitation to be the member. Um, uh, if you don't mind, I will stand up and I would be brief uh, to keep the time. My main message is to give you some practical information regarding uh, the um, in the creative uh, case 
cases, and we are going to go through a few cases, and we are going to discuss uh, the absolutely legal uh, work and how we can legally use um, the intellectual properties, and we are going to discuss uh, semi-legal ways to use uh, the intellectual property, and we are going to, to, to see the example of absolutely illegal usage of intellectual property. Uh, as for the legal um, cases, um, when we can see collaboration of the industries and the art, we can see Kandinsky Crew, we can see Free Wild, we can see BMW Art Car, BMW uh, Art Car, uh, collaboration with uh, collaboration, and we can, that is a legal collaboration. I'm not going to go deep dive in the details. In some cases, uh, uh, in some cases, um, uh, the, the intellectual property rights are finished, and in some cases, Andy Warhol uh, participated in uh, coloring uh, some specific cars, and in this way, uh, he was trying to promote the modern art. And uh, on this slide, you can see the examples of uh, legal collaboration, and this kind of collaboration which was foreseen uh, by the contracts. Uh, with the authors when it was um, foreseen and any kind of uh, creative um, uh, preparation is and uh, you understand that you can also uh, borrow and Picasso, uh, uh, Picasso uh, it is considered that uh, Picasso was saying that uh, uh, the good artists were uh, borrowing um, the the art uh, and I was also surprised uh, but uh, the but the uh, creative uh, borrowing uh, is uh, cr creative appropriation or uh, is a very interesting question we are going to discuss when it is legal and when it is illegal and here you can see the case uh, the photo of friends uh, Rin Goldsmith uh, 19 1881 and uh, the photo and then the art of Andy Warhol and his uh, uh, works uh, in his uh, typical style and um, the court has defined uh, this um, this uh, work to be uh, the creative appropriation uh, it is a creation of a new um, work uh, and uh, it is uh, the the uh, the new object and uh, the Palatian court uh, didn't support it, uh, but in this case it is uh, considered it is it it cannot be considered to be uh, the new uh, work because uh, the uh, the certain features uh, are the same. Another case uh, the uh, legal appropriation. Why did I take this uh, case? It is Andy Warhol's work. Uh, why did I take it? Because because he is uh, the king of appropriation, and uh, that is his uh, um, art method. And why do I take this example? Because uh, uh, the, the 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 period of this artwork has expired, and uh, that is a very famous art of the very famous uh, artists. And uh, uh, this uh, work. Uh, was already allowed uh, the cultural appropriation and uh, we are here we are talking not only about the laws and we can say that appropriation is uh, becoming uh, the more tone nowadays and uh, you can see a uh, Gucci collection and you can see national elements which were used why it is considered to be more because inappropriate because um, we have a direction, and uh, there is a specific direction in intellectual property, and uh, some nationalities, uh, some uh, some nations, uh, they have the right to uh, to get uh, some certain uh, some certain bonuses for uh, when uh, their culture is uh, used in commercial way and the biggest example is i think that most uh, uh, i think all uh, women know kardashian's example when um, she was using kimono and she had to rename it and uh, the last case so when the the leader of cherokee a tribe uh, uh, where he for where he is uh, for 
forbidding to use uh, uh, this name uh, for the cars uh, because uh, it is used in commercial way and uh, they have the right uh, to get some uh, bonuses for 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 this um, usage and there are a lot of examples like that uh, and uh, the tool of intellectual property is becoming uh, the one which is used to get something from this kind of usage uh, a plug yeah, uh, that is uh, the sink uh, which uh, uh, is uh, illegal following a plague season, um, and uh, the work which is uh, called Balerina uh, Lenochka, Ukrainian artist, uh, without uh, referring uh, to her, without mentioning. Uh, mentioning that uh, she, the author of this uh, sculpture, her work was uh, used, and uh, um, this case is well known. And uh, she, uh, and uh, at that moment where uh, when um, this uh, work was used, uh, she she passed away. But of course, the reputation of risks uh, um, were present there, and uh, Ukraine. After this case, Ukraine was also known as the source of uh, um, for the art. Uh, the next slide here, you can see lots of letters. Uh, you remember about the intellectual property. Analyze uh, the objects which you are using uh, when uh, you are uh, you're making, creating your art. Do you understand that you are um, you're getting inspiration or you feel that you are using someone's work if uh, if yes and uh, then there are two steps uh, you can get the license uh, uh, thank you very much uh, uh, for this uh, for your for your presentation and we have to create uh, to create new creative products and we have to combine different industries and we have to remember about uh, the rights and i'm passing the floor to our next uh, speaker we were discussing uh, the importance of uh, promotion and awareness in the sphere of intellectual property rights. Uh, already we were discussing that because uh, in uh, the biggest economist, uh, these uh, issues are discussed uh, at uh, on the school level and uh, in in the USA in in the People's Republic of China. What is the mission of the of the uh, formulating uh, forming of the intellectual property understanding? Uh, and when we involve not only the creator but also uh, the the consumer. I want to pass the floor to our next speaker, Olga Kulinich, PhD in legal science, a professor, the author of uh, a creative um, creative students. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm introducing. Uh, I'm representing the university community and. Uh, we as uh, teachers are working on awareness. What is intellectual property for us? Of course, I hope that for those who are with us today, the intellectual property is a thing which, uh, which is about love and, uh, and we can use them and to uh, and of also we have uh, uh, we have us the creators and the government uh, and government has some challenges and uh, that is the balance and when government doesn't um, manage their challenges, then we creators will have problems. And at the moment, uh, there are lots of challenges uh, that uh, that are, of course, uh, the questions of, of the amends to the legislation basis. Uh, and uh, we hope that the representatives of the government uh, who are working on the intellectual property they will help us in our 
work and as for the challenges. How can we respond to these challenges? Of course, uh, with the help of some, some tools and the strategy, which we hope will be adopted. And uh, one of the questions is uh, education. For us, it is very important to, to have intellectual property in the universities because uh, uh, we uh, we're setting it and it didn't matter if you, are, you have technical or linguistic education before that and we hope that uh, before and we hope that we will have it back and uh, uh, it can be the special centers for training in issues related to intellectual property and hopefully these pro training programs will be launched. Hopefully it will improve the qualification and uh, reception of all the skills and knowledge by the specialists, by the experts in the fashion industry and design. Also the strategy mentions the area of improving of knowledge uh, of the uh, average ordinary citizens and those of uh, children and young people that means that any education programs are directed at removal of counterfeit products improving and changing of our uh, mentality and uh, thinking so due to these concerted actions hopefully we shall have a new generation of children and young people that will respect intellectual property rights. This challenge to educators, this challenge is faced not just the, by the uh, central or uh, central organs, central authorities, but by the private companies. The, if the uh, efforts of the government uh, and uh, of course the government make every, make, ev makes every effort, but also the private educational products um, fi fight against counterfeit products. It's been going on for nine years. Um, the patent attorney is um, also uh, made series of uh, animated series about uh, Timur and intellectual property. So. Similar, you can show these movies, these these cartoons to children, to get them to know, to get them to learn about IP, IP for kids. Uh, this series were created uh, with support of the Ministry of Economy, and also, also, uh, we um, hold educational campaigns and online efforts. We've mentioned pandemic before, and for a reason. Pandemics, it's not just about online education or using Zoom. Pandemics in um, education is also something else. So with regard to education and mission of educators, I'm very thankful for high assessment, for Mr. Bogdan's uh, assessment, high assessment of the project um, mentioned on Creative Academy platform. Uh, they are there for a reason. They, uh, they were the projects implemented with my participation, and they appeared um, in the School of Superheroes, which I represent, uh, in addition to representing uh, U Ukrainian uh, Kiev Shevchenko University, so the formula is simple. Uh, dream plus creativity equals intellectual property. Every child, thanks to this project, every child who is dreaming, uh, we we are saying to them that uh, from dream to its realization, there is just one step. Uh, and this is intellectual property. This project demonstrates that there are no limits, no borders, and uh, each and everyone has lots of opportunities to implement it, including um, in healthcare institutions. So we create this network of uh, superheroes, school, and uh, you as representatives of a uh, creative industry, you can become the volunteer of the school, uh, the ambassador of the school. You can um, teach children. And with regard to creative classes with children, there are several factors, so we teach them creativity. 
first thing. Second thing is uh, that possibilities, opportunities are boundless and crea creativity is boundless is the third uh, principle. Um, this is especially in, uh, important uh, in terms of pandemics. Presently, education, um, the issue of education is uh, somehow divided uh, from the market and the children should be oriented towards future professions. It's a design of virtual worlds, uh, robo, robot technologies, drafting and designing robots. So this flexibility and creative in the present day trends will allow them to create all that. And of course, I want your children uh, to have very uh, substantial uh, summer holidays, such as Vinyamin uh, uh, from uh, United Kingdoms uh, earned uh, 20,000 pounds as a result of creating creating digital this 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 work called digital whales. So pandemics is about present day trends, it's about NFT, it's about art and absence of restrictions, absence of limits. Uh, young generation, young generation should be told about um, about all of this. It should be stimulated and and encouraged and hopefully um, with the joint through the joint efforts of the university community this will be uh, developed and uh, we will do everything possible to implement it and to popularize it and with support of VIP Academy and together uh, with our partners we shall implement the we shall popularize this intellectual property concept this is our objective thank you thank you very much the best cases are usually you know uh, those guys who draw pixel art whales digital whales and uh, earned um, lots of money so for children to be able to do that ip academy should be operating and should be having a dialogue with the in the creative industry um so as part of university policy hopefully the university policies in the sphere of intellectual property rights will be adopted we're looking forward to it and now i would like to give the floor to our final speaker last but not least uh, subject because uh, this is the uh, subject related to world intellectual property organization very important issues and pandemics proved it this is um, the issue especially important for IYP, uh, WIPO, especially it is uh, related to special needs people uh, taken into account of certain norms which need to be taken in. Miroslav Khmarski, the floor is yours. You had to wait for a long, long time. You are very patient. Maksir Khmarski is a co-founder of Avatar Law Form uh, and coach of User Friendly 3.0. Please tell us what is this? And uh, also, please tell us about inclusive design products. So this is what you are going to discuss. Thank you. It is a pleasure to be here. And uh, I would like to thank my colleagues for their speeches. Indeed, my, our organization works with intellectual property, and I wanted to note that um, when Investec uh, joins uh, a project, this is one of the first issues, and business should pay special attention to it. Uh, User-friendly 3.0 is the new norm in design, so it's not enough to, for it to just be good, to just be comfortable cozy uh, so we, we spoke about user-friendly 2.0 UX user flow 
minimalistic concept. Uh, so this is not this all is not enough, and there is a new normal uh, appearing in the world, and this new normal. From this point of view of community, this new normal uh, has three. is based on the three whales, so to say, three basics. First of all, it's accessible, accessible for people living with disabilities. I spoke with people who uh, help uh, sites to become more inclusive. So. Um, and actually, they taught me how uh, the, the proper terms, special needs people, or uh, people living with disabilities, uh, safe. Safety is uh, safety of personal data, safety of business, financial transaction, honest. Uh, transparency also. Uh, everything should be transparent and understood by the users the words that we use uh, and see and on websites including they should not be misleading based on studies 15 percent of uh, planet's uh, population have one of uh, one or another form of disability of them two to four percent have considerable or major disabilities uh, uh, some of them have a uh, visual disability or hearing disability or moving disability and uh, uh, after this we started uh, studying this topic I went uh, to a boarding school with uh, people with uh, seeing disability who had computer class so I went there to see how people with this disability interact with digital products because I was uh, I did not believe that actually people can use internet and that is this is very cool this is so this is done uh, thanks to audio format of presentation of presenting the data this is very very important for the website to have this option uh, as to the protection of personal data uh, according to Cisco research in the United States 80 uh, 89 percent of respondents uh, said especially after the new law on processing of digital uh, personal data was adopted so 89 percent of respondents said that they care about what is being done with their data. 79% said that they are willing to act. They care and they are willing to act. In other words, they want to do something about it. If I can ask for my personal data, you know, to be given back from me, uh, so there is a 79% probability that I will do that. This is with regard to honesty, uh, transparency, and misleading the users. Kyiv Star was fined for 21.3 million of Ukrainian hryvnias as a result that in their advertisements they claimed per second terrification, that they will do per second terrification. But in fact, after one second passed, they immediately charged their subscribers for one minute. So they, they find for this uh, un, uh, misleading uh, advertisement. Uh, with this slide, I wanted to say that doing Druzer Friendly 3.0, it's not boring, it's not uh, complicated. There are actually lots of tools, lots of ACEs who use this, these tools. And I'm sure you, you've met, you've heard about this design is inclusive design, uh, accessible to people with, with disabilities. Is now, more details about it. Accessible means that any design needs to be accessible for people living with disabilities. So, when I... Mm, I spoke to a boy and he said, uh, let's play computer games. 
and I'm expecting for something to to appear on the screen, and suddenly uh, uh, he's got it all in his ears. Yes, but in fact, he. So thanks to this hearing, uh, hearing aids, hearing design of the, of the of the of the internet site, he's able to follow up uh, as to what is going on on the screen. Uh, safe. Any site or any device um, has to process the data safely, and especially it is uh, important for a person to have control over their data. First level of control is the knowledge. If I know how my data is being processed, I can more or less control the situation, how to find about it. Uh, a private pol privacy policy should be presented on the website, which explains how the data is being present pr pr processed. Honest. Any design site or application should be honest with their users and not misleading. In the United States, the United States is the first uh, country to adopt this principle because they care about their users a lot and uh, I uh, mm, so I uh, joined the company as a compliance officer when the company was fined for um, overusing of the red color and red color can be misleading or red color can use to anxiety unreasonable anxiety so the company was fined for millions of dollars and that was a problem user-friendly 3.0 is a new norm so i would like to um, agree with the um, previous speaker by saying that um, you have to educate your school children, your students. You have to include uh, whatever you do, whether it's business or website or sculpture. All of this has to take into account, to take everyone into account, every person, every living being. So now we are getting ready for export and we shall have a stand on the global expo and we want to talk about it we want to cry out loud about this it's 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 a must-have thank you for your attention thank you Miroslav for this very interesting uh, speech so the last slide has uh, links to telegram and Instagram channel Thank you very much. I'm sure that red brand color sometimes tells uh, us, you know, uh, prompts us to act. Not just it's not just anxiety. It it it, it prompts to act. Uh, I wanted to proceed with panel discussions, and hopefully, organizers would allow us to take a little bit more time. So, red color reference to retooling this is a sub issue of today's forum of creative uh, creative ukraine retooling so still uh, if we single out some specific issues and tools and actions that may be that uh, may be meant as retooling, you know, maybe components to retooling. So what should we be ready for? What should we uh, do uh, to make sure that retooling happens? This is the first part of my question. And the second part, since we are so pressed for time, the second part is, OK, so today we s were talking uh, about the number of, 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 of trends and creative trends, what technology should change the paradigm? From the standpoint of industry of intellectual property, from the standpoint of creative industries, what shall we be, should we be ready to? Is it a threat or is it a new opportunity, new solutions? We don't have an answer to some questions and the summary third question. When we talk about creativity, uh, it is related to freedom. When we talk about 
creating conditions. We are talking about regulations. So where is this line? How to find uh, the balance between business and state and the user of creative product? I can give answer to the first question. What what uh, does this shift? What makes this shift? In re of over tooling, first of all, is the development of conscious development, and uh, making sure so it's constant education, making sure that mm, intellectual property uh, became an interesting topic, so that people are taught in simple terms, uh, in. Uh, high education schools on the creative design courses and trainings making sure it's not an optional course it should be a this should be prioritized so it's a vaso and as for your third question about the limits and restrictions, so that is probably not the restriction or limit that is, uh, that are the rules from the government of, to create the balance, the balance of interests and the rights. And I think the, the moral uh, standards, uh, which can be different uh, in different countries, and it can, and it is related not to the uh, freedom, the of creativity but uh, for the for the for the turn of uh, for for the way how we use it uh, so uh, you can enjoy uh, your work but if you use it um, more you have to 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 control that and as also we can uh, say that about uh, the personal uh, information uh, it is related to photography uh, to to protect from uh, from spying and also uh, that are the restrictions which are related with uh, the interest of uh, the individuals and the interest of the society and they related uh, they related to the balance and harmony in our society thank you if we're talking about uh, trends and innovations uh, of course we're uh, uh, talking a lot about nft and i think uh, there is uh, one more issue uh, about uh, the works which would be invented uh, with the help of uh, artificial intellect and I think there is no issue with nft and in my opinion that is the same thing as any kind of uh, typical art, uh, for example, the the painted, the painting, uh, and it is uh, not something you can touch, but it is digital. And as for the uh, works which would be created by artificial intellect, uh, who who is going to be the author? And uh, we can uh, say that uh, the 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 one who has created artificial intellect is going to be the author uh, but when uh, we move further and uh, artificial intellect is going to develop uh, something itself then we have to think who is actually the author and uh, do we need to change the concept of the intellectual property rights uh, well i can actually give a small comment uh, the story um, about the personal data usage is uh, escalating, uh, not the algorithm, but personal data, and everyone is discussing that. That is number almost number one uh, topic for today. And we have also our colleagues online. Uh, yes, uh, I can also add, yes, uh, Maxim, I can agree that NFT is not very complicated, but uh, I can see echo. I can hear echo. It's not uh, complicated, but uh, uh, we need uh, optimization of platforms uh, for digital art, not only platforms, because uh, a digital art uh, is creating lots of challenges uh, uh, because of downloads and uh, the opportunities uh, to change and to delete them and uh, after nft 
Haiti appeared, we had also a phenomenon of uh, creation of digital, digital and uh, analogs. Uh, and uh, the other people were becoming the owners of uh, these uh, works. So they were actually creating digital uh, analog, and they were becoming their owners. Uh, so they were calling themselves owners. And uh, there, were, there were no ways uh, to protect from this. And uh, museum and art galleries, they are very slow, like dinosaurs. And the crypto community is very fast, very flexible. They react very fast. And uh, these two worlds, they have to to meet each other. And we have to resolve this uh, big problem, uh, not to have the double ownership. Uh, when NFT object owner is not the same as uh, the owner of the physical analog, and that is the first problem. Uh, the second one, Vico has uh, made the first step because uh, they announced uh, that they are going blockchain certificate, but uh, they uh, they gave the opportunity to create uh, e-certificate with a unique um, number that is not blockchain for identification and authentication of uh, e-objects. And that is also the first stop, but actually uh, we have no uh, fully operating platforms which are working with uh, the intellectual property. We have no this kind of platforms and our startup is working on this issue and at the moment we are launching um, marketplace and we are trying to create mechanism for legal of legal management of uh, digital objects and uh, I would like to add uh, also what do I consider uh, what I think I have uh, to be changed uh, um, that is a project of support of Co Ukrainian Cultural Fund and uh, um, I would like to invite uh, all the all the members of uh, this community uh, to Ukrainian to British Art School, which we're launching from the 5th of October uh, with, uh, in partnership with British Council. And we are going to discuss uh, uh, the problems which the world is facing at the moment and uh, digitalization and block uh, chaining and uh, NFT, all the trend uh, topics we have in art sphere in uh, Britain and Ukraine. So. Uh, for those who are interested, uh, you can join us, you can contact me. Uh, we have also the web page and we are inviting you for our course. And also in the framework of this project, you will have uh, the opportunity to, to tell us what are the problems uh, you can see. And uh, as a result, we would be able to create a white paper of the things that need to be changed in the legislation basis of Ukraine, and it would be passed to the to the official bodies because there are some groups of questions. Thank you very much, and. Uh, I think that uh, it would be also interesting for the representatives of the government to participate. I think uh, we invite everyone who is uh, interested. Mr. Bogdan, uh, it, we are discussing the representatives uh, of uh, the government. Uh, thank you uh, very much. Uh, yes, of course, we would like to join uh, these projects. Thank you very much for the invitation. And in the context of the legal basis, I would like to mention that uh, for the intellectual property, we have the draft uh, Uh, the, the draft of the uh, law 555-2-34 uh, 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 and also I would like 
to, to maybe there are some offers uh, and of course uh, between the first and second reading we can we can take in account uh, some uh, comments and as for the creative industries uh, they are uh, defined on the legal level and uh, there is a law on culture uh, the type of activity is also defined and uh, we are uh, facing and with all this we are still facing the new challenges and artificial um, intellect is one of uh, the problems and uh, you know that there are uh, some uh, cases uh, for the uh, for the subject of the of the work and there are the cases in Australia and in the United States of America but I would like to to say that intellectual property does not only gives allows you to use your works but you have to to consider that uh, the owner has also the responsibility for for using of his uh, product be and uh, we have to make a research on that and we have to consider it thank you thank you uh, the other comments uh, yes I would like to add uh, the last uh, question uh, related to business uh, when is where the point uh, uh, where um, industries uh, meet uh, watching business we can uh, see that uh, the issue of intellectual property appears when the owner of uh, the property uh, uh, get some awareness and uh, he is ready uh, to play a long game when it is uh, something uh, fast uh, then of course uh, there is uh, no question about intellectual property and as for the regulation of this uh, of this issue I think uh, the United States of the USA uh, of USA the United States um, are really the leaders uh, so we, yes we have to um, to to take the best experiences and to implement them in the way how it would be better for us uh, the short comment uh, uh, technologies uh, in my opinion and what is the technology which can uh, change the attitude to, into, to the intellectual property I think that are the technologies which uh, can help uh, to understand which uh, which objects uh, was were created with violating the um, the intellectual property rights? And maybe that is uh, connected to NFT. But uh, there is also the question about the implementation. And as for business creators and uh, government, I think uh, that everything is very simple and very complicated at the same time. Business has uh, uh, creative parts, and uh, creators have to uh, to learn the main. Um, lesson that you can rely only on yourself and pandemic has uh, shown that uh, and uh, you can rely only on yourself and here there is no advice and as for government and public uh, services provided uh, of course uh, we would like uh, of course the government has uh, the monopoly and we would like uh, the government to be as much resp responsible as possible and they have to consider that they are um, providing this service for the market and you have to hear the market you have to hear uh, the market and you have to to hear the requirements for the organization of this work and that are the the things uh, we need to, to move uh, further to the bright future. Thank you very much for these insp for this inspiration, and I think we're coming to our final stage of our panel because uh, we it took a bit longer for us. Uh, uh, are there any questions? Uh, okay, so let's uh, the the last question from the moderator. Uh, let's uh, be 
a bit of futurologist. Let's uh, try to make some forecasts for the future. We're not artificial intellect, but we are people, and we are also able to uh, forecast something. Uh, who is, in your opinion, who is, who can be the the leader um, in industry or for some creative product uh, from the point of uh, view of successful case uh, in the nearest uh, future? And that is the first part of the question. And the second question, what would be the role of intellectual property in this case? Well, that is uh, a complicated uh, question uh, because if we're going to discuss all our ideas, someone will uh, take our ideas and implement that. And from the point of view of, of view of intellectual property, they are not uh, protected, and it is very difficult to foresee some kind of trends. Uh, and we remember that um, uh, Facebook once was very popular, and then Instagram was uh, popular, and the, from the very beginning, um, everyone was thinking, why do I need to post photos uh, separately? And uh, I can actually use Facebook to post photo and to write something. And uh, now we can see that it's not just uh, the social network, it's uh, a very big uh, online shop. And at the moment, uh, we have uh, TikTok. And from the very beginning, it was pretty weird. Why do I need? Um, to make short videos with music, but uh, uh, it's becoming more popular and um, people start to earn money on that. Uh, there are there is uh, advertisement and uh, and of course there are lots of questions because uh, we didn't resolve the question with Instagram when uh, we hear uh, that in the USA there is. Uh, uh, when influencers and famous people, uh, they are posting their photos. So the photos so where, where they are pictured, but uh, they are posting uh, the photos and uh, they are sued. It is very weird because from one point, uh, on the one hand, uh, they are not asked when they are when they are uh, photo shoot it and uh, when when there is uh, the photo where they are present uh, they are sued and uh, there was a very absurd case when the brand has uh, uh, has uh, the brand has t started to produce uh, clothes and uh, then they sued photographer because photographer was uh, shooting uh, um, their clothes and here we have uh, to understand uh, how it can be used and maybe make some amends. So in brief, if I could recommend something, I believe that IP has a future that, and it will change the universe. Uh, the answer to your question is in some, is probably the, in some fantasy book. Uh, all of the dreamers, all of the inventors, they uh, get their ideas from fantasy books and I'm sure that the answer was invented already. It's out there. It's just that we're missing the implementer. And after we find them, they will make this change and they will mobilize masses and uh, change the course of history. And it's not about TikTok in Ukraine. It's about something else. Thank you. So let's futurize, futuristic forecast. I'm sure that we shall still have the general trend, a general trend for us, changing something that relates to emotions, uh, our relation to each other, something, something re related to our vices. And all of this a combination will become the trigger. It will trigger the development of business, technology, and everything that surrounds us. So for men, it's also will be women. Women motivate us. Uh, they motivate us for great deeds, great accomplishments. And as for IP, as for the IP, it will play the major role there. And the change, 
intellectual property right definition will change. It will be more all-encompassing as, uh, as well as uh, something that is considered to be the usage of the property right, and also that will depend on the communication means. Let's meet 20 years later. Let's meet here 20 years later, hopefully. Thank you. Also, I wanted to add that something that can't be done by machines, the creati creativity, the human creativity and teamwork, and front runners among the front runners will be the companies that invest in this and develop their uh, personal creative thinking, design thinking instances. So, intellectual property front runners will be the technologies, uh, technologies that will simplify um, and. Um, uh, decrease, reduce the number of steps that you need, for instance, to receive the certificate that you are perfect. Uh, so, yeah, I think this is an important thing, important and uh, relevant thing today. So what about our online speakers? Online. I loved it about women when someone mentioned women. Because uh, oftentimes uh, uh, men uh, blame women most of the time, and then we discuss gender issues. So for me, future belongs to our startup, which offers uh, solutions for digital art. It's a platform that provides for a full complex of management of digital art and we propose to you know to take up a portion of the market and uh, we we root for you and we wish you success so we have women on the staff and these women will promote these ideas and implementation and uh, men are there to support you Mr. Bogdan. Okay, we have uh, we have Mr. Bogdan online. The floor is yours. So in the I've already mentioned. Uh, I, I I'm sure that there is very few that I can add to what Miss Olga said. So uh, human may create, and creativity is a God-given. It's a God-given skill, and hopefully, it will be popular in Ukraine, and uh, Ukraine will share it with the international community. So, at, at this, at this optimistic note, we shall wrap up today's panel discussion. First of all, I wanted to thank the ministry of culture informational policy for such opportunity to have this discussion i would like to thank our speakers and experts who've mm, discussed really cool and relevant topics shared their insights and and forecasts for the future and i'm sure that everyone understands that the role of intellectual property will also increase. So at the very end, I wanted to say that the message of this forum is create here and now, but don't forget about IP. Thank you very much and see you soon.